Hello everyone, I'm Julia Donaldson and thanks for joining me again. Today's story is an alphabet story. It's called An Analphabet and it's got really lovely pictures by Sharon King Chai. Not just ordinary pictures, there's special holes and flaps. It's a really interesting book to turn the pages of. Um, I'm very excited because I've got my grandchildren, or three of my grandchildren anyway, here and it's the first time I'm sitting in their garden. It's the first time I've been able to see them since the lockdown started. We're having to keep two meters apart, which is a little bit hard. Here is an ant. Who is prettier than an ant? And this animal is going to begin with B. So can you think of an animal beginning with B? Maybe a bulldog? A butterfly! A butterfly. They've got it over there on the rug. A butterfly. And there's a lovely picture of the butterfly. They've got their own copy of the book there. Now, who has more legs than a butterfly? And this animal begins with K. Can anyone think? Caterpillar. A caterpillar. caterpillar. And there's the picture of the caterpillar. Who can run faster than a caterpillar? Very fast animal beginning with D. Could it be a dog, a maybe? Deer. What do you think? What do you lot a think? A deer. A deer. Deers are very fast. There's the deer running along through the forest. And who is bigger than a deer, beginning with E? Yes, Felix. An elephant. An elephant. There we are. I bet you've got that one. Um, now, who is pinker than an elephant, beginning with F? Can you think of any animals? It's a bird, beginning with F. A flamingo! A flamingo! A Very good. And here's the flamingo. Now, who can butt better than a flamingo? An animal that can butt you with its horns, beginning with G. Yes. A goat. A goat. And this time we have to lift the flap up. And there's a goat butting the flamingo. Who is pricklier than a goat? A very prickly animal, beginning with Huh. Poppy, can you think? I know! A hedgehog! Funny, where's Kitty gone? I don't know. Oh, she's clearly gone to look for a hedgehog. She's gone off to look for a hedgehog. All right, well, perhaps you two can help me. Who has more wrinkles than a hedgehog, beginning with I? That's a hard one. An iguana! Iguana, that's right. There it is. Lovely green, wrinkly iguana. Who's more wobbly than an iguana, beginning with J? Felix, can you think? Oh, I, I, it's not a jaguar, is it? Because they're not wobbly. A jellyfish! A jellyfish, very good. Now, who can jump better than a jellyfish, beginning with K? Yeah. Kangaroo. A kangaroo, lovely pictures of kangaroos there. And who is spottier? than a kangaroo, beginning with L. Can you think? Leopard. Ah, now it could be I a leopard. Think it's a ladybird. It's a ladybird, but leopards are spotty too. But here's a lovely ladybird. And who can dig deeper than a ladybird, beginning with M? Mole. Ah, oh, mole. That's nice. You have to lift the paper down there. There's a lovely little mole. Who can sing? better than a mole, and it's a bird that has a beautiful singing voice. Mm. Mm. I'm going to tell you, it's a nightingale. And who can hug tighter than a nightingale? An animal that can wrap its arms around you and give you a big an hug. Octopus. An octopus. Here we are, there's the octopus. Who is muddier than an octopus? A very muddy a animal, pig. beginning with per Oh, you are very quick there, Felix. There we are, there's the muddy pig. Who can fly better than a pig, beginning with what? It's another bird. A quail. A quail. There we are, there's the quail. And who has longer ears than a quail? I'm not sure if a quail has ears. A rabbit. Oh, a rabbit. There we are, let's turn the page, see if Felix is right. Yes, a rabbit. And who can slither better than a rabbit? That's quite an easy one. A snake. A snake. There we are. There's a slithery snake. 
Who can growl better than a snake, beginning with her? Oh, I turned it, I turned it too soon. I showed them, I gave the game. Who can keep off the rain? I think it might be going to rain. And um, who can keep off the rain better than a tiger? Ah, 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 another bird. I don't know if you will know this one, everyone. Not many animals beginning with ah, but it's an umbrella bird. There we are. Okay. And who can, oh, I know, who is shyer than an umbrella bird? A very shy little animal begin with v. Can you two think? A vole. A vole. That's a very a sweet picture of a little, this is a water vole here. Who is much bigger than a vole? And it's not going to be elephant this time because it begins to wha, wha, a, a whale. Wha, a whale. There we are. There's a big whale with a baby whale as well. Who is more see-through than a whale? This is a really unusual animals beginning with x x i'm going to tell you because i don't think many people know this animal it's an x-ray tetrafish who is shaggier than an x-ray tetrafish very woolly shaggy animal can you guys think a horse a horse but uh, it's got to yes because it begins with yeah there we are oh i've turned over the wrong page here we are Here's a yak, and who has more stripes than a yak, beginning with z? Stripes and a zebra. That's right. Here we are. There's the zebras or zebras. That's what I say anyway. <laughs> and who is smaller than a zebra? But what letter is it going to begin with? Z, is that the last letter of the alphabet? It goes back to the beginning. That's right, you've and read this book before, haven't you, Puppy? It says, go back to the beginning of the book. Can you remember what the first animal in the book was? Ant! It, it was an ant there, they're showing their book. There we are, it's an ant. Oh, gosh. Lots of letters in the alphabet, aren't they? Yeah. Thank you, Puppy and Felix, and Kitty as well. Kitty's, I wonder if she's done that hedgehog yet. Well, now I'm delighted that Sharon King Chai, who did the wonderful pictures for this book, is going to do some drawing for you. Thanks so much, Julia. Hello, everyone. My name's Sharon. I'm the illustrator for Animal Alphabet, and I really love doing the artwork for this. Um, in my artwork, I like to use lots and lots of different objects, do lots of leaf prints, and then sometimes I find some slightly more unusual things. One day I was about to eat a melon and a cantaloupe, it had lots, lots of fine lines in it, um, and I thought it looked really interesting. So I actually painted the melon and then rolled it around a piece of paper, and then that became the texture for my elephant here. Um, so today I'd love to bring you to my studio so we can do some printing together. So today I thought we'd do an underwater scene inspired by the X-ray tetrafish from Animal Alphabet. So first I'm beginning just by doing a a light blue paint wash in the background to emulate the sea. And I've just got some paper underneath um, so I can go straight to the edges as well. Like so. Um, so I'll now give that one a few minutes to dry and I'll come back soon. So I wanted to add some um, bits of seaweed to the bottom of our underwater scene. Uh, so they don't actually have, don't live too close to the ocean, so I'm just improvising here with bits of grass and rosemary and things from the garden. So what I'm doing now is I'm just quickly giving them a good coat of paint, just loading them up right now. Get my background back. And I find the best way to do this is to position it and with a nice clean piece of paper you then put it on top and press and just continue to do it with all the different pieces that you want. See it gets quite mucky. <laughs> And 
there's our background. So I thought we'd make some fish now out of a mixture of collage and printing. Um, for the collage, I always have this box of dreams, I call it, um, where I collect all the things like envelopes, magazines, um, old artworks, crackers, wrapping paper, um, bubble prints, basically old artworks. Um, and the kids love it because it sort of gives them inspiration for new ideas. And I love recycling old things and layering up artwork as well. So I pre-cut a few fish shapes out of these bits. Um, and I thought I'd begin with the X-ray tetra fish. The X-ray tetra fish from Anamalfa was actually created using the skeleton of a leaf. I thought that the veins of the leaf looked a bit like the, um, the skeleton of the fish, which is obviously called an X-ray tetra fish because it's see-through. Um, so to create this again, we paint it. I'm just gonna put this paper under there. So that was a skeleton of my extra tetra fish, and now I'm just going to cut it out. I'll add the top fin there, the two bottom fins as well, and then where I think its tail should be. So there's my first shape, which I'll put to the side. And now I'm just going to print these quickly um, using a mix of things. So I'm going to use the tops of carrots. Um, they're quite nice, like round circle shapes. Um, these, which I thought could be like scales. So I've got like celery sticks, big scales, and small scales for fish. And this is like, I think, from some garlic I bought. And I love the netting of it. Um, I thought they looked quite cool, like scales. So I'll just do these now. Now I'm going to let this fish dry for a minute and then assemble it all together. So now everything's dry, I'm just going to pull it all together. So the last thing to do is just add the finishing touches. I'm cutting out some eyes for our fish, just out of some card, and I'm just going to colour this in. And stick it together. Thank you so much Sharon, that was wonderful. And thank you Poppy, Felix and Kitty for joining in today. Oh by the way, Kitty did find a hedgehog. Oh well done Kitty. And I think you've got to be animal beginning with further flamingo over flamingo? there. Flamingo? Well next week's one, story one. is about an animal beginning with wor, a worm called Superworm. So do join me then. Axel Scheffler is going to do some drawing for you. And Malcolm and I will sing you the Superworm song as well as telling you the story. So goodbye till then.